fact, as we discussed at length yesterday, Cardinal George Pell uh, has lost his appeal. He's officially a pedophile. He has possibly one more chance to clear his name. But yesterday was a huge setback for the Cardinal and his supporters. He can go to the High Court, but there's no guarantee they'll hear it. And if they do, of course, there's no guarantee they'll overturn the conviction. As the judge said yesterday, the Chief Justice said yesterday, this has been enormously divisive. One judge on the appeal bench didn't believe the accuser and supported George Pell. Two did believe the accuser. Now, I was surprised by the decision, uh, and I still struggle with uh, with what's happened here a little. George Pell doesn't fit the profile of a pedophile's behaviour in many ways, but he is convicted. He's got more than three years to serve, and uh, it would seem he may be uh, finished with the, uh, the church, certainly with Rome, even if the High Court overturns the conviction. But in the studio with me is the Archbishop of Melbourne, described today as a protégé of George Pell, and he has described himself... Uh, as a friend, Archbishop Peter Comensoli, good morning. Good morning, Neil. Is George Pell a pedophile? Um, I'm someone who follows the um, the processes of our law, and um, our laws and then courts have made a judgment now, so that judgment we abide by. And the judgment at the moment is that he's guilty of child sexual abuse, and, uh, and so we live... With that reality, knowing all sorts of other aspects, as you've named yourself just in your introduction, that uh, all along this has been a matter that people have struggled to and grappled with what is the truth going on. We have 12 good uh, jurors who couldn't make a decision, 12 who could, two good judges who agreed, one good judge who couldn't. Uh, and so on. So uh, getting to the truth of this matter has been and continues, I think, to be um, a real challenge. But what do you believe? Is he guilty? I believe in what he said to me on many occasions that he is innocent and uh, I continue to um, be uh, really quite shocked with all of how how things have developed. Having said that, I also want to say that um, Jay, the the man who's brought forward his own matter, um, I, I also accept, as he has indicated himself, of abuse. Now, then, there's this question of who has who has actually been the abuser in, in this case, and this continues. to... So you're not questioning he's been uh, abused. You're questioning whether it was George Pell. Yes. Have you reached out to the victim? Uh, no, because I don't know that the person he himself, and I want to respect his circumstances. He himself has not. Um, come forward to offer his name. We only know him as Jay in, in all, of the, all of those matters, and I um, want to continue to respect what he might want. Now, he might eventually come forward, and then we'll be able to have a conversation. What about the family of the deceased victim? Have you had any dealings with them? Again, they, they have chosen at this stage not to come forward, and I don't want to impose. So neither has had any compensation? Uh, at this stage, no. Are they entitled to it? Uh, we would go through the usual processes in that regard. Well, we have a man convicted, a priest yes, convicted yes, of yes, assaulting yes. them. They would yes. have to be, wouldn't they? Uh, but as you know, the um, those processes, the, the criminal process are not the same as the civil ones, and I don't know what they would want at this stage. So the first thing would be sit down, let's have a talk. So you, would you be um, keen to speak with them, the family and the uh, other, other accuser, the surviving accuser? Yes, yeah, so I'm always open to speaking with people who want to come forward and share their story. You told me last time we spoke you'd visit, you were going to visit George Pell. How many times have you seen him? Uh, once, uh, and I've had uh, conversations with other people who have seen him. How is he? Uh, at that stage, this was back in May when I saw him, um, he was uh, uh, calm he was uh, spiritually strong, and I, th- and I would s- probably say at that stage he was uh, very hopeful of what might come forward in the um, in the appeal process. Uh, I would say t- today he's is very different. Have you taken his confession in jail? Uh, I, I don't talk about anyone's confessions. Mm, that's inappropriate, is it? To even to say, not to say yes, what to even say said, anyone. Yes, I'm not going to tell anyone. I'm not going to share with anyone if I've heard their confession or not. Oh, really? I didn't. Re- I realised you yeah. couldn't say what happened. I didn't know that you couldn't no, say no, that. No, no. no, Okay. Will you uh, Will you visit him again? Oh yes, yes. Um, I, I, I've been visiting prisoners in now prisons already. I'll continue to do that. He'll be a prisoner in one of our prisons, and uh, I will do so both as the Archbishop of Melbourne. That's my 
responsibilities to go out to those who uh, uh, are in prison. Um, that's an important dimension of our faith, but I'll do so also as a friend. The important people in this now are the victims and the families, aren't they? So, sorry, the most saying. important people in this now are the, the surviving victim and the families of the deceased victim? Always, always along. Always it is those that are the, the ones who have been abused or brought, bring forward their own story courageously uh, that is res my responsibility as Archbishop to listen and to then act appropriately in whatever the circumstances might be. But That's different from different people. But you still don't believe them? I uh, didn't say that, no. No, I'd well, say George, said, well, one of them says yes. George Pell attacked him. Yes, and I, as as I've indicated, I I really genuinely think that there's abuse in his life, and that reality needs to be talked through with him. But he says George Pell did it. You mm. say he didn't. Uh, not specifically, I didn't say he didn't do it. I, well, do you the, believe he the, did or not? I, I I believe what George has said to me, and, which is that he didn't do it. And I also believe that the man who has come forward um, has come forward to share his story of abuse in our uh, in the setting of the church and where that sits in terms of uh, the particularities remains this uh, challenging situation that the courts themselves have struggled with. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Do you believe mm. him or not? Um, I believe the man has been abused. Yes, but not by George Pell. I believe. Both. So How our courts, both? because our courts put forward a binary option, a binary option says either or. But um, I genuinely think that I can take on the, my knowledge of uh, the man in terms of George Pell and uh, accept what he says, has said to me. I can also take on uh, what I've heard of Jay and uh, what he said in terms of abuse. It doesn't always, in the stories of those who have been abused, um, and this is something that, that um, has always been the case, those, those details, the details around memory and so on, can always be uh, a difficult thing to come to. I should hasten to say, Jay isn't his name. Jay is the letter that he's being Yes, I know, and I, but I don't know his name. And no, I no, I know, and neither do I, and, and we're not able to use it even if we did. You meet victims regularly, don't you? Yes, I'll meet three today, actually. Do they raise this issue with you? What, what effect is it having on them? Um, uh, for all victims, I think these today and yesterday particularly would have brought forward memories again. It, one of the circumstances for those who are victims of abuse is that when they hear of other stories, particularly when they're contentious, as this one is, uh, it, it raises matters of great pain and struggle with them, even though th th they may not be associated with the actual event uh, that's being discussed, it raises their own circumstances. So there's been a lot of phone calls uh, uh, to our office. Uh, uh, we have, I think you know, Neil, of our care link, they've been um, fielding calls and, and offering services to, to those people. Talking to Archb Archbishop Peter Common solely are you a protege of George Pell as described? Um, I, I find that a funny word. Uh, as far as I know, I really hadn't had anything to do with him before I was made an arch. Oh, sorry, before I was made a bishop in um, in Sydney, uh, I was made an auxiliary bishop of George. So uh, he would have been looking around for someone and spotted me along the line. I had not really had much to do with him before then, but um, I've certainly since um, formed this friendship. The statements have said that the church will support Pell, uh, George Pell. How? Through visitation and pastoral care. Financially? No, it hasn't, and hasn't been doing so. No money for his defence at all? No. Will there be? Not the church, no. Well, what do you mean, not the church? A parishioner's been putting in? Oh, a person, individuals, yes, are family members and friends, uh, but not the no money of the Archdiocese of Melbourne, no money of uh, one of the uh, dioceses of, of uh, Australia has contributed. Is, uh, will he be cared for when he gets out of jail? By the church? Oh, we don't even know if he's going to get out of jail at this stage. Well, he's going to get out eventually. He's, 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 he's three he years. might very well die in jail. Really? Well, he's an old man. His health's never been real good for a while. Mm. Has his health gone backwards in jail? Um, uh, what, what I saw of his image yesterday, and uh, he's certainly deteriorated, yes. Should he be released on compassionate grounds? Um, I don't think that's 
anything I understand really. I, I don't know what the processes are for 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 uh, the parole board in that regard. If George Pell is guilty, surely you should admit it and ease the suffering of the victims. Um, if if he believes he's innocent, persons are allowed to continue to uh, express their innocence, and he's done so from the beginning, continues to do so. And as as you know, Neil, there is um, the, the journey hasn't quite got to the end. We don't know if there's going to be uh, an attempt to bring forward a matter to the High Court, um, and that, that could very well happen. I believe they have radios in prison. It's possible George Pell is listening. What would you say to him? Uh, hello, George. You know of my prayer and concern and friendship for you. Uh, and I, I also know that we as a church here in Melbourne will continue to work for the victims, and I reckon you will want me to be doing that. As you know, there's information in the Royal Commission redacted around the uh, situation with George Pell. That, that's going to be released eventually, and maybe sooner rather than later, because there's no longer a court case for it to influence. That is likely to be critical of the church. Are you facing a tough time over that? Or, or critical of George Pell's handling of the situation within the church? Yeah. Uh, again, as you as you know, Neil, we've had a process in place, um, which is a threefold process in, in terms of reaching out to people who have been abused. It's a, an investigative process, an inquiry process, which involves an independent um, commissioner that I who does that work independently, obviously, an assessment panel around uh, a compensation figure and uh, an ongoing care uh, uh, dimension. All of those, all three of those are, are autonomous from one another and autonomous from me except for the paying of the bills. Yeah, but you're in for a tough time, aren't you? You're having it, I don't mean you personally, I mean, well, maybe you personally, but the church is having a tough time. Oh, yes. And, and uh, it's going to get tough. It's going to be, it's going to be there for a while. Yes, and um, and perhaps rightly so, given what has occurred in the past. And I want to continue to emphasise that, that that sadly most of the abuse is a, is now a past reality. Uh, I was looking at figures only um, the other day that it was during the seventies, sixties, and seventies there was appallingly high levels of abuse. Um, uh, from the eighties, it started to dip. The 90s, there was very few uh, new cases coming through, and there's been none since the 2000s. And when was George Pell Archbishop of Melbourne? Uh, from the late 1990s to the beginning of 2000. So the drop-off has been very significant since the establishment of the protocols. I read in the same article, I read you're a protege, that there's a synod next year, which is the first of this size since World War II. It's huge, is that right? In fact, since before World War II, uh, 1937 or 39, I can't what remember. Will was do? Uh, the, the significance of this is to be able to have a look at ourselves as the whole church in Australia. We're, we've been considering now for more than 12 months um, through dialogue and uh, consultation around around the country as to what are the, the key issues that we think that, that, that God is looking for us as a church in Australia into the future. And it's, it's a deep consideration of that into the future. Is Are people being fair to George Pell? Are people being... Being fair, or is he wearing the sins of the church, not the man? Uh, I, I, I think that all of the judges yesterday made it very clear that they're dealing with only... I'll put the judges the, um, to one side. Yeah, I'm but thinking... I think that's the point, yeah. um, that... Uh, to conflate everything about uh, how he was involved in uh, dealing with cases to uh, his own situation in terms of being accused of um, abuse. Those are different realities and they should be treated differently rather than conflated. Did he cover up for offenders and move them around the system to protect them? Not that my, not of my knowledge, no. Because that's what he's accused of, obviously. Yeah, but not, not in my knowledge. The The... The aspects of um, when he was in Ballarat, and I don't know of that, so it's before my time. Is faith in the church rattled? Are you having trouble, and will you continue to have trouble getting people through the doors? Um, I, I think there's been a ch general challenge around uh, religious belief in for a number of decades now, um, and even well and truly before the abuse of the crisis, or the crisis in abuse that came um, to the fore. Uh, People generally, I would say, uh, there has been a movement away from faith and Christian faith. 
uh, that's something that um, someone like me, I want to say to people that the my belief in Jesus Christ remains um, something that guides my life and I want to share that with others. So it's finding ways in which that might happen. Archbishop, I've already shown my ignorance of the confessional, but um, you uh, did say about the Victorian law that you would go to jail rather than um, say what had happened within the confessional. You haven't changed your mind on that? No, I found it interesting, Neil. Uh, this question came up in the uh, California legislature and the, they, a bill was proposed uh, and the legislators there have pulled back from that and have removed that bill now. Not because of the issue about should uh, uh, the seal be removed, but because of all the various implications that hadn't been thought through. And I would still argue that this is the case. There's a, there's a social good of the seal of confession, just as there's a social good around the lawyer-client um, uh, relationship or the journalist-source relationship. Those, that social good... I think remains uh, something that we should be okay. um, protecting. The government says that you, they've been in talks with you about this. Have they or not? Uh, the Premier and I spoke about this in our one meeting uh, 12 months ago, um, uh, and he sh said, yes, we're going to bring forward legislation. And I asked if we could see the um, draft bill before it um, became public, and he said he would make that available, but that didn't happen. Is it an attack on religious freedom? Uh, that's one of the dimensions of the issue here, I think, that um, that ordinary folk... I, I, I describe the Sacrament of Reconciliation, which is the name we give to confession, if you like. Um, I describe it as the people's sacrament. It really is something that um, ordinary folk um, is important for them, really important mm. for them, and finding ways in which they can continue to be protected in that sacrament is important. You short of money? Me? Well, no, not you. <laughs> not you. I, no, 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 but the church. Yeah. I mean, I read about staff being sacked and reshuffled. I mean, we have the a presentation college being sold, and some reports mm. that's to get costs down. Is there is there okay. a financial crisis for the to, church? To bits going on there, um, Neil. The, the, the schools, and uh, that was a congregational school, so they have their own particular um, financial arrangements. I don't, I'm not involved with that at all outside my jurisdiction. In terms of the archdiocese, yes, we're certainly um, needing to make sure we're um, uh, balancing the books like any family needs to do. And uh, there have been some significant deficits um, and I'm working to do that now. Is that related to the George Pell situation? No, not at all. Mm. <laughs> right, some callers coming through saying you sound like an apologist for George Pell. Are you comfortable with that? Um, I, I've been saying all along that he's a friend, so I don't think that say, just simply saying that someone is a friend is being an apologist one way or another. I would want to make it clear that there's a distinction between uh, the matters that have that uh, involved the court case is different from matters around uh, how abuse has been handled in, in our archdiocese. Archbishop, regardless of outcome here, can he ever work again as a priest? Can he go back to Rome? Um, yes, this is going to be something that Rome will need to deal with, actually, uh, or at least the Vatican. Um, it, George hasn't been, um, in a sense, a part of the Australian Church since 2014. He, when he's appointed to Rome, uh, the Pope took over, in a sense, direct uh, 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 line of um, responsibility, if you like. So it will be Rome who will have to make a decision as to what his status will be into the future, um, rather than the Church in Australia. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Neil. The Catholic Archbishop of Melbourne, Archbishop Peter Comensoli.